what I've done here is I've drawn a typical picture of what a flat earth map would look like. And this map is just basically a flat circle. And I've divided this flat circle into 24 time zones. As you see the perimeter as it goes around here, there's 24 of these wedges. Each wedge represents a one hour time zone. Now for the flat earther, the perimeter of this circle would represent the South Pole, and right in the center would be the North Pole, Antarctica. This line that I've drawn halfway between the distance, that would represent the equator. Okay, and what I've done is I've taken two pieces of string, and on both sides of the equator, this would represent the North Northern Hemisphere, and on this side of the equator, this would represent the southern hemisphere. And so on the flat earth model, the distance between five time zones and the northern hemisphere is going to be shorter than the distance between five time zones and the southern hemisphere. And that can be demonstrated by these two pieces of string that I've cut. So here's the first one that is coming out of the southern hemisphere. And let's line that one up on our ruler. And you can see that it's about a little over four inches long. And here's the one that's coming off of the northern hemisphere. And I'm going to line it up on our ruler. And you can see that it's about two and a quarter inches long. So effectively, it's roughly about twice as long to cross a time zone in the southern hemisphere than what it is in the northern hemisphere you know, according to the flat earth map model. So if you were to take an airplane and fly across five time zones in the northern hemisphere, it should take a quicker distance than what it would to fly across five time zones in the southern hemisphere. To better demonstrate this, I've cut out two examples of what time zones would look like when they're laid out flat. On the flat earth model, the time zone would look like a, a pizza slice where this tip right here would be the North Pole and this outer edge would be the South Pole, and here's the equator. On the sphere, a time zone would look more like an ecliptical type shape, almost like an elongated football, and where the North Pole would be on one tip and the South Pole would be on the other tip. When the two pieces are considered side by side, at the equator, the distance across each time zone should be the same. When you get up here into the northern hemisphere, the distance across each time zone should still be close to the same. The difference will be when you get down into the southern hemisphere, on a, to cross a time zone on a flat earth model would be almost twice the distance that it would be to cross a time zone on the sphere model. So let's go and see if we can prove this out. I've taken my globe and this globe is divided into 24 time zones by these vertical lines running from north to south and I've selected two pairs of cities that are about equal distance apart from east to west and also about equal distance from the equator so that they're coming right around the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Cancer Capricorn. So effectively on a spear, being that they're equal distance from the equator, if this is a globe then the distance between these two cities from east to west should be just about identical on both sides of the equator. So let's take a look at our first pair of cities. I've selected uh, Miami, Florida, and I've selected Casablanca, Morocco. And from Miami, Florida, there are about five time zones. So let's count them out right here. This would be one, two, three, four, five. And then my other pair of cities that I've selected is San Pedro, Brazil, and Johannesburg, South Africa. And so let's count those out. So that's roughly about one, two, three, four, five time zones between that pair of cities. So next what we're going to do is we're going to go to Travelocity, a well-known air ticket site, and we're going to see exactly what it takes to get a ticket and how long it takes to fly from this city in Miami, Florida to Casablanca, Morocco, and how long it takes to fly from San Pedro, Brazil, over to Johannesburg, South Africa. Now, 
As I go to Travelocity, what would I expect to find? Well, if the Earth is a sphere and it's round, then I would expect the time to fly from this city to this city would be close to the same that it's going to take to fly from this city to this city. However, if the Earth is flat, then as we've discussed earlier, it would probably take half the time to fly from this city to this city as what it would to fly between cities in the southern hemisphere. So let's go to Travelocity and we'll find out which is true. Okay, I've gone to Travelocity and I've researched a flight going from Miami, Florida to Casablanca, Morocco. And this hour, and this flight takes about eight hours and 10 minutes. Here. At the same time, I've gone and researched another flight going from San Paulo, Brazil to Johannesburg, South Africa. This flight covers about the same distance in the southern hemisphere and it takes about 8 hours and 25 minutes to complete this flight. As we can see from Travelocity, the travel times between both pairs of cities is essentially the same. I hate to say it, but brother, you've been deceived by people that have tried to make you believe the earth is flat. Many of these people have tried to use scriptures from the Holy Bible to try to support their position. While the Bible is absolutely accurate and there are no errors in the Bible, many times man's interpretation of scriptures can be inaccurate. And that's what the case of the flat earth is. While we know that God created the whole earth and all that is in it, he created different languages that are verbal, and he's also created math. And math is one of God's perfect languages that is not subject to interpretation because two plus two will always equal four and there is no other answer. And in this example I've given you, I've used mathematics to show you that these distances are the same in both hemispheres. There is no other interpretation. The math is the fact and it stands for the truth. So what should you do? The first thing you should do is to make sure that your walk with Jesus Christ is so rock solid that you will be able to stand strong next time the deceiver comes to you. I've got a clip following this that's going to show you just to double check to make sure that you are walking with him and after which rely on the Holy Spirit to give you discernment when the deceiver comes and tries to lead you astray. Well, let me pose a question to you. Are you a good person? And I'm sure many of you out there watching this video right now, you're probably really nice folks, okay? Let's put the same question against God's standard, the Ten Commandments. Okay, one of the commandments says, thou shalt not lie. And I'm sure if you're honest with yourself at some point in your life, you've told at least one small lie before. We all have, I have too, okay? Another one of his commandments says, thou shalt not steal. And I'm sure if you're honest with yourself again, at some point in your life, even no matter how small it was, you've probably stolen some small item, okay? Those rules define what sin is, okay? And if you broke even one of those rules, such as lying and stealing, that means you've sinned. We all have, okay? There isn't anybody that hasn't. The Bible says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. The punishment for sin is going to hell or eternal separation from God. But the good news is that Jesus Christ came, he took a brutal beating on the cross. He was sacrificed on the cross, went to the grave. Three days later, he arose and now he sits beside the Father in heaven. The whole point of why he had to take that punishment on the cross is he was taking the punishment for my sin and for your sin. But it can only be accounted to you if through faith you believe in who he was and what he did and you repent, okay? For the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in your heart God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Many of you out there right now are thinking, hey, I'm a good person. For all the good deeds I've done, surely God would look favorable on me on Judgment Day and not send me to hell. But the Bible actually says that by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The only way to be reconciled for eternity with Jesus Christ in heaven is through putting your faith and trust in what he did personally for you on the cross, taking your punishment. If you're not sure who God is and if he really exists, I encourage you to pray like this. Say, God, if you are real, if you are out there, I pray that you would reveal yourself to me in a tangible way. And when you make that kind of prayer, he's going to answer you and he's going to show you exactly who he is. And at that point, you will know he's real. At the point in time you know he's real and you're ready to accept what Christ has done for you and know that you have eternal salvation with him in heaven, the gospel is so simple. You just pray like this. You say, Lord, I acknowledge that I've sinned and I've fallen short of your glory. I know that 
you paid a price for my personal sin on the cross. I know you were the Son of God and that you were resurrected and taken my place on that cross. And I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. That's how simple it is. But here's the catch. Just saying those words doesn't do a thing for you unless the heart believes the words you're saying. For the gospel says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, which I just did, and you believe that God raised him from the dead, the believing part is where salvation is. Salvation only comes through faith and believing. So anyways, I appreciate you watching. If you get a chance, visit our website, eternalrepair.com. That's eternalrepair.com, where we have a lot of other interesting repair ideas and also some more information on your walk with Jesus Christ. Thanks for watching. God bless and have a good day.